So do we really have a shot at a soft landing? Is a recession around the corner? What about rates? What about housing? What about all of this stuff? We're going to talk to the one and only Anna Kelly. How you doing, Anna? I'm doing great, Michael. So much has happened since we last talked through our vacation breaks here. Um, exciting yeah, stuff. It's just continuing. But I think we can kind of see where the Fed is going with rates. And and I've definitely got some, some predictions. I don't know if they match yours, but I've definitely well, got thoughts on that. Let's jump in. I'd love to hear where you're at. Yeah, we really haven't talked economy in a month or so, which is rare for us. So uh, a lot has happened, both with inflation and a Fed rate increase and all of that. So what are some predictions? What are your thoughts uh, heading to the end of the year next year? Sure. So, you know, again, we always say we don't have a crystal ball and there are so many levers <laughs> in the economy to pull and so much um, intricacies and interdependencies in our economy such that it's sufficiently more complicated, I think is safe to say than it has been in history. And there's many different things that could could change things. This exogenous um, factors coming from the outside that could definitely, you know, change you know, where we head, whether it's more inflation, whether it's deflation, soft landing, hard landing, et cetera. But I'll say this, just studying the past and studying market cycles the way that I do, I follow a lot of economists that really look at the business cycles. They look at these short-term cyclical cycles and these long-term secular cycles. And depending on who you listen to, they're all over the place as to where they think we are. But what I'll say is when you look at previous recessions, um, generally speaking, they're usually um, preceded by the Fed raising interest rates. It just mm -hmm. is the fact because the Fed is trying to cool down a really expanding economy that's overheating. So they start raising rates and usually that leads towards some type of reaction, stock market reaction real estate reaction, and you start to see the um, factors that cause an expansion or economic boom to unwind and become a contraction or economic bust. And so when I look at these factors, and there's something that economists call leading indicators, and then there's coincident indicators of the aggregate economy that are happening in real time, like things that um, are happening all at once that tend to paint a picture of where the economy is, and then they look at lagging indicators. What I can see right now, regardless of what the Fed does, is that those factors that generally lead to pointing to a recession, they're all flashing bright red. So people that say the Fed has won the fight against inflation, and they are actually going to have a soft landing or no recession. Like, look at the stock market. It's mm. booming. And so we are going to avoid a recession are really kind of short-sighted and not looking at the big picture. They're looking at stock market and they're looking at the fact that unemployment is low and saying that means the economy is great. But what I see, and then maybe we can dive into this you know, a little bit later in the show, is these fact the, these indicators that show that before every recession, people are blindsided by the recession. And the reason why is because right before a recession, you have a booming economy that's overheating. You have stock market highs and you have unemployment lows before every recession. And it always seems like suddenly we've gone from high to like a crash. And the reality is these things start to happen, but then all of a sudden it seems that they're coming down because people aren't watching the leading economic indicators. They're only looking at stock market and unemployment and saying things are healthy. And in my estimation, based on what I'm seeing about all these indicators um, and economists that are really watching the cycles is that we are on the cusp of recession. It's just taking a lot longer than everybody thought. It doesn't mean that it's going away. So I think a recession is inevitable, honestly. And I think, you know, whether it's a hard landing or a soft landing, I don't know. But typically a, a soft landing um, is very short lived. It doesn't trickle through all the sectors of the economy. It mostly hits things like housing um, and mild on manufacturing and profits. And a hard landing really, you know, puts us into low GDP, trickles through the whole economy. I think that we are heading for a hard landing. I'm going to be, I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. So, the Fed has never done what the Fed has done without a hard landing. I think they've overcorrected. They've raised rates too high and that we haven't even begun to see 
you know, the the outcomes of those rate hikes over the last six to nine months, I think it's going to be a hard landing. That's my guess. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things in that. So first and foremost, a recession is coming 100%. Yes. They're part of the cycle. Yes. Where it turns into an interesting discussion is when you put time on that. Yes. Like when. Um, <laughs> I'm on I'm on record saying I thought a Q, the recession started in Q2. Clearly wrong and clearly haven't made right. that, right? GDP just came in at 2.4% above expectations. Yes. So I was clearly wrong. Yes. I haven't. I haven't made a new call. I'm still licking my wounds from that mistake. Yes. Um, but my early indications in Q3, right? I've been traveling a bunch this last month. Everything is packed, packed. So yes. I can't imagine the recession starts in, in Q3. It's going to be another positive growth. So are we talking Q4, Q1 start? I mean, because it's coming. The only question yes. is, you know, what's that first quarter of negative GDP growth? Yeah, it's really hard to say. And I, I think I'm learning a lot, too, because I study the economy and, and we've talked about on the show, you know, I was at AIG and had been in private banking and I worked with institutional investments for years before the 08, 09 shock um, that took many in the investment world by surprise. And I learned that as much as I knew about retail investments and even starting to learn about real estate at that point, I didn't understand all of the economic factors that really go into um, warning signs that were there for a couple of years before 08 and 09. Everybody just kind of either didn't understand it or put blinders on. So I've become a student of the economy pretty, um, pretty heavily over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, but I'm still learning, right? And this is such an unprecedented time, truly, in, in my lifetime of seeing, you know, basically zero bound interest rates making money free since 2009, almost the entire time period, um, these ra rapid booms in real estate, and then all of a sudden, the highest interest rates that the highest, fastest change in interest rates in our lifetimes, um, or at least since I was a little baby. Um, so I, I'm still learning a lot of things. And there's a couple of economists that I've been really um, studying. And I, I watch a show called Wealthy On. I don't know if you've ever seen it. it you'd be a uh -huh. great guest on that show. I'm going to have to say something to Adam Taggart. But what I love is that they always have all these different economists. And some of them are investing in things that I could care less about, but they have different perspectives on the economy. And one of the things that I've learned about the Fed is that most of the governors on the Fed, those that actually have voting, um, uh, are voting for what they're doing with monetary policy, they are like Keynesian economists. And so they really mm. look at employment. Um, you know, they always say they have a dual mandate of, of price stability and, and good levels of unemployment, like maximum employment. So those have been their two mandates for a really long time. But they tend to look at two key factors. I mean, yes, they look at interest rates. They look at CPI. They look at, you know, PPI, um, core inflation. But really, they look at unemployment and GDP. And they're kind of these macro economists that are looking at those two numbers saying this is an indicator of the health of the economy. But those numbers, GDP and um, employment are really lagging indicators. So mon th those that are at the Fed right now, they come from a, a economic theory that really looks at employment as their key gauge of where are things, and then GDP and CPI. But if you look at other economists that are another school of thought that really watch the business cycles, and they track you know, the, the current um, cyclical factors and these secular factors, these long-term factors of the economy, they say, hey, the Fed is looking at this completely wrong. They're looking at the lagging indicators while we are looking at all these leading indicators and these um, coincident indicators of the real-time economy that are showing us that things are really unhealthy. Where the Fed just came out, Powell just came out and said, we might be done raising rates and we think we're going to avoid a recession. That's because they're only really looking at inflation and GDP, which you said is positive right now, mm -hmm. and employment. So what these micro, well, what these cyclical economists, and I'm not sure what the technical name for them is, what school of thought it is, but they really fight, follow the cycles and where things are. What they say is that they operate from a completely different framework, and they believe we're heading for a real recession very, very quickly. They, you know, The timing, to your point, is it next quarter? Is it the following? It's really hard to say. But here's the high level um, of what 
what they've been talking about and what I'm really watching. And there's an acronym called HOPE, okay? It's housing, orders, profits, and then employment. And in every major cyclical cycle, secular cycle, which means it's longer than 18 months, it's these long-term horizons, mm -hmm. what you see first is housing starts to boom. People start to have the wealth effect. They feel wealthier. So they go out and they spend more. As they spend more, companies create more orders. The O is for orders and they start producing and ramping up production, right? Then profits go up, corporate profits. And then employment goes up. They hire more people. They pay you higher wages. And then it starts to reverse in the same way. Hmm. Housing starts to bottom. You've you've hit your top, your peak of prices, and then transactions slow. Well, guess what? We've already seen that happen. Orders start to slow down. Costs are so high. People start to feel the effects of maybe I'm losing some equity. Maybe I need to start pulling back. In the in big ticket items, there has been a slowing in the economy, even though we're spending a lot of money at the movies or on food or whatever. Um, and then profits start to take a hit. In the S&P right now, Michael, other than some of the key outlier FANG companies, most of the S&P companies are, are way under. They're already in a earnings recession, profits recession. The profits are down su substantially in um, real estate, mm -hmm. in manufacturing, in industrials, et cetera. So we've already seen the, the beginning of the downturn in profits. And I think more of those are happening as we start to see more corporate layoffs. The last ball to roll over is employment. So the question is, where is employment? We look at headline employment and so does the Fed. And they say unemployment's super low, but mm -hmm. there's multiple components of that employment that these economists are watching. And they're saying, we have unemployment rate, but we also have how many are continuing on unemployment? How many are renewing their unemployment because they can't get jobs? And what's happening to the hourly wage employees? They're working less hours. Their wages are being cut. Those things are real indicators that a recession is pretty imminent. So we've already seen this housing downturn, the orders downturn, the profits downturn, employment's the last to go. So, you know, some of these guys are looking and saying that the NBER, which you and I've talked about a lot, that dates recessions, they look at kind of 10 coincident indicators and eight of the 10 have been recessionary since last year, fourth quarter. That's why yeah. you and I thought it would happen much sooner, but mm -hmm. that this employment has been holding on mm -hmm. and the Fed has been going after wages. They're going after wages because they know if they can bring them down, inflation will come down. But once wages start to collapse, you're usually six months in a recession. So that's the history of prior recessions as unemployment doesn't really bottom till six months in. And usually the NBER has just declared the recession by the time employment bottoms. So I think we are really far down, you know, that that ladder of, of hope. <laughs> Mm -hmm. like, it's a really good acronym yeah, that, like that recession is on the horizon. It's just that when it happens, it's going to be, everyone's going to think like what happened because things seem so good. We're looking at the wrong numbers to say our economy is strong. The economy is yeah. really, really weak. If you look at all the cyclicals and the things that happened before a recession. So I yeah, think it's... by fourth quarter or mm -hmm. first quarter of next year, we're in a recession, whether the, the NBER has called it or not. I think that, I think that's very reasonable. The one the one number I'm tracking a lot more than I have the last 20 years is M2 money supply. Yes. And the reason I've gone there is because kind of back to our, you know, conversations the last 6 months or so is just lending is falling off a cliff, right? New loans. Yes. Banks, banks are not not only are banks going to have, you know, the red October and category 5 hurricane with past loans, but a lot yes. of banks aren't doing new loans. Right. Because right. they have to raise their cash reserves. Right. They just announced new rules. If you're one hundred billion dollars in assets or deposits, you have to increase your reserves. And this M2 money supply has gone negative the first time since the Great Depression. It's probably going to go a lot more negative. Uh, I think there's obvious pain in commercial real estate where we've talked about, but I actually think the most pain is in small business. How yes. many small businesses can't get loans today? to buy equipment, to expand, to do this or that. I think there's small businesses that are running good businesses that can't get loans. And unfortunately, they don't have the cash. 
So they're going to use credit cards or whatever and eventually have layoffs. So I think the biggest pain that's coming that no one's talking about is small businesses and small businesses have a lot of employees when you add them together. So I think there's some, absolutely some shadows lurking out there for us. Absolutely. And one of the scary things is, you know, again, listening to to multiple economists that are looking at these, you know, really deflationary um, tailwinds that are pushing us into deflation now that inflation is, you know, starting to really come down, is they say, you know, listen, the the what's happening in the economy and all these other areas that are already recessionary is happening independent of the rates going up. So the rate effect hasn't even really trickled through the economy, but the, the banks are really just starting to pull back. And once you have a recession, the banks are going to pull back even worse. And it's usually yeah. they're usually about six months behind on how bad they tighten six months after a recession. They'll really tighten. So let's say we don't have a recession until you know January. It's probably this time next year before we start to see the real impacts of wow, businesses start to go under, you know, real estate starts yeah. to collapse where they can't refinance. And so to your point about money supply, you know, the leading indicators, which are the things that start to tell you that things are tightening M2 money supply is one of those, you know, the yield curve is the other and the yield curve has been the most, you know, accurate predictor of recessions, but it just, people are doubting it because it's kind of taking a long time to get there because of how strong the economy was for a while and yeah. labor supply, but monetary policy, what the Fed's doing, that's a leading indicator. People think the Fed is done, so we're out of the woods. But what they've done is the beginning of the cycles that put you into recession. So it's a leading indicator, just like M2 money supply, just mm -hmm. like you know the stock index, et cetera. Then we move into these coincident indicators that say what's happening in real time. And that's your CPI, your PPI, your GDP, your sales, your production, your income, your spending, those are starting to come down. And then the last things that lag are really, you know, the employment, um, total earnings and, um, you know, all these things that we're looking at and saying things are great. I, I think it's coming. I'm with you 100% uh, believe that we will have a recession. Listen, I'm glad if we're wrong. If we're wrong, great. Um, but, but I'm looking forward to not to be doom and gloom, but when we have a recession, things need to be cleaned out, right? Absolutely. Cycles happen because there's there's unhealthy zombie companies that are making profits. Well, they're making stock market profits, even though they're not healthy. And so healthy economies have booms and then they clean out in the bus. And that's where we have big opportunity as real estate investors, you know, to Absolutely. make a lot of money. So don't be afraid of a recession, but see that it is coming. Don't put blinders on and listen to the headline news that say, GDP is great. The stock market's booming. We're out of recession risk. I think the recession risk is really just at the beginning, um, and and it's probably going to be you know sooner than later that that it actually arrives. Couldn't agree more. Anna, where can people find you? Great, you can find me here on my playlist on your channel every week. You can find me at social media at Anna Kelly REI Mom and my website for real estate coaching and consulting at REIMom.com. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank week. Thank you.